excellence in education is what the noble Dr. Annie Webb Blanton held dear to her heart. Born in Houston, Texas, Dr. Blanton became the first woman president of the Texas State Teachers Association and eventually would become the first president of the Delta Kappa Gamma Society. During her four years as State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Dr. Blanton was instrumental in passing the Better Schools Amendment to the Texas Constitution, establishing a free textbook policy and increasing public school teachers' salaries by an average of 54%. Mrs. Blanton was an English teacher who loved reading mysteries. After receiving her master's degree, she earned her doctorate in the field of rural education and rural sociology. After obtaining her doctorate, Dr. Blanton worked for the University of Texas and was promoted to professor of rural education. This was a huge honor as she was only the third woman to receive this rank at the university. Dr. Blanton was remembered for her warmth, love, and is said to have been a leader that anyone would have wanted on their team. It is said that when Mamie Sue Bastion entered a room, laughter came in too. She was the epitome of buoyant living, of humorous remarks, and of infectious optimism. She loved to sing and she always inspired others to join in on the fun. After graduating high school, she lived life to the fullest and attended college during only the summer terms so that she could travel the U.S. and Canada throughout the rest of the year. Mamie Sue Bastion fought against unjust discrimination for many years. She worked hard and successfully established a teacher retirement system in Texas. Her legislative skill prompted her to spend time pursuing committees to improve educational bills and promoting their passage. Mamie Sue Bastion was remembered for her charm, love, and laughter, and is said to be one whom we'd all adore. Everyone loved to get together at Miss Ruby Cole's home because she was the most gracious hostess making sure everyone was happy. Ruby is also said to have loved traveling to New York City with her mother to attend plays. In addition to the fun times, Miss Ruby Cole is said to be a woman of courage, goodwill, and that she was an educator destined to lead. Part of Ruby Cole's success came from her detailed planning, her thoroughness, and determination. Every committee report, every speech had to be absolutely perfect. Ruby worked for better schools and for teacher welfare through committee efforts of the State Texas Teachers Association and through the legislative committees of Delta Kappa Gamma and of elementary principals. Ruby was the national chairman for the committee for nominations. Miss Ruby Cole was appreciated for her tireless work to beautify a city and she felt that history should be our guide. Miss Mabel Grizzard loved a good bridge game or any other card game. She was a past president of the Shakespeare Club, along with serving on committees like the Civic Beautification Committee of the Garden Club and the Education and Scholarship Committee, just to name a few. Ms. Grizzard taught in the State Orphan's Home and then at a large elementary school in her hometown where she served first as a teacher and then as a principal for approximately 40 years. Ms. Mabel Grizzard was a positive person and she served our society faithfully. She was so well respected that her hometown named her First Lady of the Year. Grace and vivacity described Dr. Anna Hiss well. She was an accomplished pianist as well as a fascinating conversationalist. She enjoyed working with the Girl Scouts and loved to tell stories to both adults and children while sitting around a campfire. A University of Texas physical education and health teacher, Anna Hiss had a wide range of interests. She was involved in the League of Women's Voters and the Mental Hygiene Association. Dr. Anna Hiss also organized the State Association of the Athletic Foundation of College Women and the State Association of Physical Education for College Women. She led in the development of the Inter-American and International Relations Program for Health, Physical Education, and Recreation. Dr. Anna Hiss is said to have been an enthusiastic leader with vision and people respected what she had to say. 
Miss Ray King loved to travel with her sister, and together they explored the United States, Canada, and Mexico. She found great joy in meeting new people and learning new information to enliven her history classes. Ray also enjoyed needlepoint, hooking rugs, and cooking. She began her teaching career in the 5th and 6th grades before moving into middle school to teach and then to high school, where she was eventually named chairman of the history department. Miss King was the first treasurer of Delta Kappa Gamma. It fell upon her to organize the funds and set policies for future treasurers to follow. Miss Ray King was known for her meticulous keeping of records and is said to have been a symbol of quiet devotion to duty. Miss Sue King had a love of hiking in the mountains, going to plays, and the occasional football game. For relaxation, she liked to play tennis, bridge, and do needlepoint. In addition, Sue was an avid reader and she is known for looking for reading materials for her school library while she was on vacation. Sue was independent, not relying on her parents to finance her education. Her love of learning prompted her to travel to California where she and her sister continued their education. Sue gathered a lifetime of accomplishments ranging from first teaching Latin and then history at the high school level. Although her life was cut short, Sue influenced the lives of those within her influence. Miss Sue King is known for her intellect and was respected for her leadership and her pride in sharing her knowledge. Dr. Helen Koch was from Illinois and was a hardworking individual who packed more activities into one day than you and I could imagine. As a child, she watched her father tend to the plants in the garden and upon her retirement built her own garden. She would also often go on archeological digs. Because of that work ethic, Ellen was able to accomplish a great deal in her life. At an early age, Helen found a love of music and became an accomplished pianist. When arthritis set in, she gave up playing the piano and studied psychology. This led to her generous contributions in the area of child psychology. In addition, Helen spent a year as an exchange professor in Frankfurt, Germany. Dr. Helen Koch is said to have been a notable educator who was known the world all around. She was a professor of psychology whose students considered her profound. When Mrs. Ruby Terrell Lomax was a little girl, she saw a picture of a beautiful bouquet of roses, and she excitedly exclaimed, Me, a bunch of roses! After that, Ruby was affectionately called Bunch. Bunch, or Ruby, loved learning and came from a family of teachers. Her parents, sister, and brother-in-law were all educators. Eventually, Ruby earned her master's degree in classical languages. After her retirement, she spent time researching folklore at the Library of Congress. Ruby Terrell Lomax is said to have been a scholarly parliamentarian. Dr. Cora Martin is said to have been a woman of many talents. Cora is best known for helping Annie Webb Blanton write the lyrics to the Delta Kappa Gamma song. Cora loved to write, and she authored a series called Real Life Readers that was adopted in many states. She taught reading for many years before joining the University of Texas as an assistant professor of elementary education where she helped prepare future elementary teachers for the classroom. After her retirement, she was not about to sit still. Whether she was cruising the Mediterranean, flying to Europe, or driving across the United States, Cora Martin loved to travel. Dr. Cora Martin is said to have been charming and friendly and that she added color and fun wherever she'd go. Can you imagine being told that you could not teach because you were married? Neither could Lala Odom. She was outspoken and non-conforming and she worked hard to improve the professional image of educators. She fought the ruling that contracts could not be issued to a married teacher. After several months, she was one of the few teachers in Austin who were granted teaching contracts. She taught music and mathematics for many years and her best known pupil was Will Rogers. 
She took an active part in political affairs of the city and participated in the League of Women Voters. Mrs. Odom was present for the dedication of the Delta Kappa Gamma headquarters building in Austin in August of 1956. Mrs. Lala Odom is said to have been a fearless woman who was extremely courageous. Beginning her career teaching elementary school, eventually teaching speech during summer school, Leela Lee Williams spent the majority of her career as a principal. She was asked to develop the work-study play system, or the platoon system, for larger elementary schools. This system divided school populations into two groups, so that while one group was receiving three R's by specialized teachers, the others studied in specifically equipped facilities such as art, gym, and shop. Miss Leela also authored a book titled Auditorium Activities for Use by Teachers in the Platoon System. While teaching, she was a firm believer that the demand for increased efficiency in teaching methods must be met with higher salaries. Leela Lee Williams is said to have been a tireless worker advocating for improving status and pay. She was known for her concern and congeniality. The Delta Kappa Gamma Society International was founded on May 11, 1929. The founders believed that there was a need for an organization in which women educators, rural and urban teachers, preschool, elementary, high school, college, and university teachers, librarians, school administrators, supervisors, might be united for efforts towards better professional preparation, recognition of women's work in the teaching profession, and scholarships for those needing aid in improving their professional preparation. Today, we honor them.